but will um, not be providing the slides as a PDF. So take notes and ask questions and make sure you take back all of this information to your brand. Um, here is our disclaimer. I'm just going to quickly read this over. The content here shown here is for educational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. You are encouraged to verify any and all parts of this presentation with your own brand's legal counsel. Kitchens with Confidence by Menu Trinfo will not be held responsible for fines or other penalties that arise from recommendations that were made following our best understanding of all published laws and supplemental guidance documents. This webinar contains material protected under the international and federal copyright laws and treaties. Any unauthorized reprint or any use of any kind of this material is prohibited. No part of this webinar may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means. Electronic or mechanical, including photocopying, recording, or by any information storage and retrieval system without express written permission from Menu Trinfo, the author and publisher. So I want to introduce our speakers today. Um, Ruth Sullivan will be joining us for part of the webinar. Ruth is the Assistant Director in, of Nutrition Management for the Food Service Department at Syracuse University. In her current position, she maintains the Food Allergy Program, working with students on any special diet. She develops nutrition education information for all of the dining services at Syracuse. She also develops and implements training for food service staff on food allergies, general nutrition, and surf safe. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition from Syracuse University and a Master's in Health Education from Sunny Cortland in Cortland, New York. Ms. Sullivan completed her dietetic internship at Syracuse University. Ms. Sullivan received the Isabel Hollihan Award in 2015. This award was given by her professional peers in recognition of provision of quality food service by a dietitian working directly in a food service management administration capacity. I'm so excited to have Ruth here helping me with this webinar today. Thank you, Ruth. And the one you've been hearing from, my name is Allie Burnett. I'm the manager for Kitchens with Confidence by Menu Trinfo. In my current position, I conduct audits for allergy and gluten-free certifications, manage clients' monthly and quarterly reports, and work with clients to develop allergy-free best practices. I also support Menu Trinfo's nutrition department and Allertrain education department, where I assist with nutrition analysis, training for food allergies and food safety, and I am a certified master trainer through Allertrain. I have earned my Bachelor in Science in Nutrition and Food Science from Colorado State University. Um, our office is here, right here in Fort Collins, Colorado, and um, I'm so happy to be here with you all today. Um, now for the overview, today we will discuss um, and review the components of a food allergy plan and areas to review if you're preparing for a food allergy audit. Then we will hear from Ruth and hear about Syracuse's food allergy plan and their story. Then we'll briefly go over a food allergy gluten-free audit options, and then we'll have a Q&A. <clears throat> so in this webinar, I'm assuming those of you who are attending are familiar with food allergies and know what the top eight allergens. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. However, it is important for our discussion to briefly go over some food allergy statistics and why having a food allergy policy is important in your establishment. And it's important to note that having no food allergy policy is a policy. According to FAIR, Food Allergy Research and Education, it's estimated there are 15 million Americans living with food allergies and that equals one in 13 kids having one or multiple food allergies. Food allergy reactions send someone to the emergency department every three minutes. 
that's insane. Um, and it's really scary. And we also know that there's an increasing number of people with food allergies, coupled with the fact that teenagers and young adults are at the highest risk for fatal food-induced anaphylaxis, making this a critical issue for colleges and universities, but also for all food service establishments. This is why I'm hoping you have joined this webinar because you're interested in auditing your operation, whether it's to certify a space free of allergens or gluten, or to verify and validate your food allergy plans. So when we start looking at auditing um, an establishment, we're going to start looking at loading dock from tabletop, how are you preventing cross contact and minimizing risk for a food allergic reaction to occur in your establishment. And no matter how you serve it, you can do it in a lot of different ways. Serving those with allergies can look different depending on your campus or your, how your restaurant operates. So it's important to decide what serving styles will work best for you and how they can safely be implemented at your institution. A dedicated kitchen is one of the most effective styles. Um, however, it can be costly and just not realistic for an establishment if you don't have that extra space. Uh, Pre-ordered meals is an option if you don't have that many students with special dietary needs. Then you can ensure that those meals are being made safe and pre-packaging them to avoid them being cross-contacted after they're made. A dedicated pantry with a locked door is also an effective route to go. Um, again, this way you're going to need the extra space um, to have that and you're going to need that space is going to need extra attention as well. Um, or you can use a combination of these, and this is what we see at many campuses. So once a style is chosen, you'll be creating policies and procedures to ensure it is effectively implemented. You'll want to train your staff on best practices for your chosen style, and it's important to know if you have a closed access pantry um, you'll need to educate the students about their responsibilities when using that space. So let's dive into the components of a food allergy plan. Um, establishing a campus-wide approach with solid policies and procedures and effective training are essential to providing a safe and in inclusive environment. Because no two schools are the same, the plans that work best on one campus may not be the best solution for another. These are the main components of a food allergy plan. Having a food allergy policy, training and emergency response, back of house, front of house. And using these as a guide to assess your food allergy policy allows you to kind of audit your own policy and then you can potentially get a third party policy or third party audit in there. Excuse me. So what is a food allergy policy? Um, a food allergy policy includes a collaborative campus-wide approach. Whether the policy stands on its own or is incorporated within your existing policies, the following are important areas it may need to cover. So system. First, develop a system or a clear process for requesting accommodations or modifications. It should be transparent and flexible, um, capable of meeting students' needs without being burdensome. burdensome excuse me. Disability services. Um, collaborate with your campus disability services. A policy that covers food allergies may be written as a separate policy or included within the disability policy for a campus. Accommodations. Determine a process for defining appropriate accommodations and modifications and how to implement those. Partnerships. It's important to build partnerships with outreach and marketing teams to raise student awareness of your policy. Um, a lot of campus may have the food allergy process start before the student even starts on campus. And then it may have some students that slip through the cracks cracks of those um, initial onboarding documents. So make sure you catch everyone. And then having 
Um, solid communication. Establish a plan for communication with the students, a point person in the kitchen, as well as having access to a dietitian. And then assessment. Assess your services, review the process, ensure compliance, and remedy mistakes so that they can be avoided in the future. Ensure that policies and procedures are clear, well-documented, widely publicized, and regularly reviewed. All right, although we believe effective training and policy should prevent the need for emergency response to accidents, they still do happen, and it's important to have a plan and be prepared for the worst case scenario. So a huge emphasis here on training. Train your staff involved in food allergy accommodations, particularly staff in dining services and housing services on food allergies, how to recognize and respond to a food allergy reaction, and have, a, have training on campus emergency plans for anaphylaxis. Provide additional training for resident advisors on helping students become their own self-advocates, mediating conflicts surrounding food and dorm rooms, and recognizing the symptoms of anaphylaxis. Create an emergency plan that considers the quickest way to get epinephrine to a student experience anaphylaxis, and check with your state and local laws about keeping stock epinephrine in the halls, know where your nearest emergency medical unit is, and include incident reports and follow-up procedures in case of an emergency. So your back of house, um, these are some important components to think about when you're preparing your plan and looking at the back of house. So you need to create an allergen map to identify areas at higher risk for cross contact. Build a recipe and ingredient database so accurate allergen information is readily available. Create written allergen policies for your vendors. Create a policy and train employees on proper receiving procedures to minimize opportunities for cross contact. Train employees on label reading procedures. Create storage solutions to segregate allergen friendly and gluten free foods and minimize the risk for cross-contact. Keep separate equipment for preparing allergen-friendly meals. Follow proper steps in food preparation and production to produce safe meals and minimize the chances of cross-contact. And then finally, follow proper cleaning and sanitizing procedures for cooking services, utensils, and hands to minimize the chance of cross-contact. The last piece of the allergen policy, and I do apologize, I'm going through these pretty quickly. I do want to get through all the information we have here for you today, but the front of house um, section. So create labels and signage educating diners about your food allergy policies and identification of allergens present in food. So these could be on um, self-serve areas. They could be on glass. Um, TV screens, any way you can create a label and sign that the diner knows before they grab food what they're ordering and knowing if there's allergens present in that food. Training designated staff to answer food allergy questions from students. And then follow proper steps to minimize the chances of cross contact during service. Also, finally, follow proper steps for front of house cleaning and sanitizing to minimize chances of cross contact. So, What's your campus look like when you clean the dining hall? Do all the tables use the same sanitizer and towel to get wiped off? That could prevent or that could produce a food allergic reaction by increasing risk of cross contact. Now I'm going to hand the mic over to Ruth um, to share Syracuse University's food allergy plan and their experience. Hi, Allie. Ruth, are you here? You? I'm here. Okay, great. I'll move on to the next slide for you. So first I want to thank Kitchens with Confidence for the opportunity for me to be a part of this webinar. It's been a great experience working with Kitchens with Confidence uh, with the certification of Free From Gluten. We were able to really strengthen our program. Um, so first I want to talk about 
how we're set up. So we have a central commissary, and that commissary actually provides food to all of um, Syracuse University Food Services, including cafes, our student centers. So it's quite an operation, and about 50% of the food that the dining centers serve, it does come from our um, commissary. So what we've done is when we've developed our gluten-free areas, each dining center prepares within their dining center. So any of the food that comes from our commissary, we do not consider gluten-free. Uh, so the, each uh, facility does prepare their own menu. So I want to talk about our um, food allergy plan. And our food allergy plan, we start out with a policy. Our food allergy policy is pretty extensive, and we continue to change it. We continue to update it. And working with Kitchens with Confidence, the best part, one of the best parts is having their ear if I have a question. And a question may be something about labeling, it may be something about the FDA and what they're asking us to do. Our food, we have a food allergy team. And the team consists of disability services, health services, we have our parents' office, we have risk management, we have safety, and we have housing, we have student services. And we're kind of, we kind of add a lot um, each year because we start to see that food allergies and special diets, there's such an extensive outreach and there's such an extensive, um, so many people coming in with special diets that we need, if we find another group, oh, we're going to pull you in because uh, we need your help, uh, we need your specialty. Um, so the food allergy policy that we have, as I said, it's pretty extensive. We start out with the student's responsibilities. And what is a student responsible for? Um, is it medical documentation if they come with a special diet? Uh, the meetings that we hold, one-on-one -on -one meetings with students and parents. Uh, we also do meetings when students are moving in. We do uh, group presentations. And then we talk about our menu and our menu review. We have an online menu that indicates where all the big eight appear. But again, uh, gluten-free, that's not the menu that we use. We use a separate menu. And we go over that menu with students. Uh, we will send them the menu for them to review. Uh, they might have questions. Uh, and then also, too, what's the responsibility of Syracuse University? And you know, is it, is it through disability services? Is it through the medical director at health services? Is it through risk management? But what do we do um, as a team at Syracuse University? Uh, we often meet, we often, the team, we often meet and discuss the certain policies and how they all interact with each other. Uh, disability services may refer someone to me. I may refer somebody to disability services. So it's definitely a team effort. Uh, we work through this policy. Another big part of our policy is we have a training policy, and it's a food allergy, celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, food intolerance is, um, training that we actually go through AllerTrain. I'm a master trainer, and we use their programs. We use AllerTrain U, AllerTrain Lite, AllerTrain Mini, and we base our trainings on what we think that staff person should know, whether they should go through U, whether they should go through Lite. Uh, our training policy also includes not only who should be trained all the way up to our directors, but when, um, as needed type thing. If we, we think somebody may, ha may need a little extra training, we may pull them into two trainings. Um, so it, it, it kind of builds, they kind of build on, um, they may have started with Allertrain Light, and now we feel they need to go through Allertrain U. We also have, as part of our policy, is we have, if somebody has a food reaction um, incident, thank God that, that happens rarely, we do have a form. And we have a shared drive at Syracuse University. So anybody, any manager, supervisor, or cook, if something happens that a student may approach them, hey, I think I'm have a, having a reaction, you know, we'll talk about emergency procedures in a second. There's um, a procedure they follow, so they know exactly what to do. If somebody comes to you, this is exactly what you do. Step one, step two, who to call, what to do. Um, my cell phone's on there, they can contact me at any time. So a staff person knows what to do. And then there's also um, a follow-up, uh, food uh, incident follow-up form. Another thing that we have that we, when Kitchens with Confidence was here, 
we have some very strong bid language that goes out to our vendors and our team in food services. They're pretty strict about making sure our vendors are following uh, the bid language that we have, we have set uh, with the help of Kitchens with Confidence. So then the emergency procedures, um, through Allertrain Light and Allertrain U, it spells out to our staff people, this is what you do. If there's an emergency, this is what you do. When we train our staff, we train them on the dangers of cross-contact, you know, why food allergies, why celiac disease, why they're so important that you know and that you have the right information. And a food allergy, we know if there's a reaction, pretty serious. Celiac disease, pretty serious. They're all pretty serious. But we explain to them if somebody has um, a lact or lactose intolerant and they accidentally consume uh, milk, yeah, they're probably not going to go to the hospital, but they're a student. They may be sick for a while, and that's them missing classes, and they're not learning. And that's what we're here for. We're here to make sure that our students are learning. We uh, talk to our staff about the symptoms, symptoms of a food allergy reaction, symptoms of somebody, you know, I'm not feeling too good, and what they need to do, what's your procedure then? Now, if somebody does approach them and they um, have, they're saying, I have, have an allergy and I think I consumed that allergen, one thing our staff, they do is they know if, they're, if somebody's sitting on the ground or laying on the ground, we do not stand them up. Uh, we do not move them. We do not leave them alone. And we train them on these things. They locate their epinephrine, help the student locate their epinephrine, always call in 911. And when they call 911, they are trained to say, uh, they use the term food allergy reaction um, anaphylaxis. So the ambulance, even the Syracuse University ambulance, knows what's, when they get there what's going on. And our ambulance at Syracuse University um, and our local ambulances do carry epinephrine. Uh, so we're pretty sure, we're pretty serious about, you know, if a reaction happens, you need to know how to deal with this. We also sh we show them what the epinephrine injectors look like, and we do send them. We do show them a little bit of training on how to use how to use this. Um, so in case they had to, that they could. Now with the back of the house, uh, we do have um, allergen mapping, and that's always in progress. That's always always changing, always updating. Every recipe. An ingredient that comes into our food services department is approved first through me, then through a menu committee. Any recipe, we want to make sure that um, if it does contain the big eight or if it does contain gluten, you know, we know where that's going to be. We know that that's going to be pretty, it's going to be highlighted um, on our online menu. Um, all of our staff, um, regardless of they, they've been here for a day or 30 years, they have to read every recipe that comes across their desk. They cannot assume that the, I know that recipe, I can make it in my sleep. They need to read the recipe. Um, in the back of the house, substitutions are not allowed. If for some reason you have to substitute, you have to get manager and supervisor approval, then uh, you have to relabel it. And we'll talk a little bit about how we label um, in the front of the house. Um, they're always trying to look at the labels. Um, we've had issues where a new product came in, and we have a main warehouse. And the people who are uh, receiving in our main warehouse, they're our first line of defense. If they see something that doesn't look right, they bring it to our attention. And a few times we've had issues where our new meatballs now contain sesame where they didn't before. But they don't look at everything. So when something comes and you're making a recipe, we um, have our staff, you know, look at the ingredients. And we've caught three or four things. We had one um, uh, item that contained cashews that didn't in the past, and somebody was able to pick that out. So we were able to, to catch it before it went out. Um, uh, if there's a special meal needed, uh, all staff are trained on how to prepare it, how to, you know, change your gloves, change your apron, wash your hands, um, using the cutting board. So they're, they're trained on if I'm making a special meal, um, how do I do this? Um, using covered dishes, uh, pa paper tray, if you need tray on the pa paper on the tray, you know, simple hand washing. We go through that uh, through Aller Train, and we go through it uh, when we use Serve Safe. Uh, one of the future, coming up in the future, what we're looking at doing in the back of the house, particularly, and through our commissary, 
is when Kitchens of the Confidence was here in January to look at um, glute, just to be free from gluten, you know, we mentioned we really would like to be free from peanuts and tree nuts. Nothing goes to our, we don't send any food to our dining centers that contain peanuts or tree nuts. The only peanuts we have in our dining centers are PCs, some almond milk, and then we use coconut. But students who have tree nut allergies, we don't have any of them here that are allergic to coconut. So what we're looking um, to do in the near future is to work with Allie and Betsy at Kitchens with Confidence to turn our commissary production kitchen and our cook chill facility into peanut and tree nut fray. The reason why we can't call it that now is because we have a bake shop and we have a catering kitchen that shares some of the same equipment. So we're looking at the steps to hopefully in the future have a um, production kitchen and cook chill that we can call peanut and, and uh, tree nut fray. And then for the, to the um, front of the house, we, again, we treat every staff member we have, regardless of their position, goes through some form of aller train. And we have kind of a, um, if, if a student hasn't worked with me and they present themselves at a dining facility at Syracuse University and they indicate they have a special diet, they have an allergy, whatever that may be, the person who they're speaking to now um, is going to uh, be that first person in charge of what's going to happen from uh, the beginning. They send the student, bring the student to our manager and our supervisor. And then the manager or the supervisor will discuss um, with the student, what's your special diet, here's what we can do. And then we show them all the steps. And all the steps from point A to point Z are monitored. Um, and then at the front of the house too, one thing that we we started doing is, <clears throat> you know, we the the staff are cleaning the tables appropriately. We have started putting up, uh, they're called sani wipes, and they're in every dining center, hanging on the wall. So if a student decides they need their table cleaned and they're just going to do that, it's very easy for them. It's very, it's they can see the sani wipes, they pull it off, and they can clean their own table if needed. Um, now for labeling, we have the online menu, and the online menu you can get to at any time, and that's going to show you where the big A are. And we try to label sesame if we see, see that. We also have in each dining center, we have big displays. And so the displays are going to show you the menu, and they're going to show you where the big A to appear. We also have QR codes. So the student can scan the QR code that's going to give them the nutritionals, but it's also going to give them allergens. So if they're unsure, they didn't see the menu, they can scan the QR code. Our gluten-free lines, each dining center has a separate gluten-free line, and they have their own QR codes. So students can also scan those QR codes. And um, in the future, we're going to have display boards right when you walk in a dining center. It's a big display, interactive, that you can then get to both the online menu and our gluten-free menu. So you'll be able to – actually, there's so many ways to be able to review um, what we have uh, for students to um, you know, see what might, might be in, in food and uh, what they can and can't eat. So then I want to talk about some of the accommodations that we have at Syracuse University. We do have a disclaimer. Uh, we went through risk management. We developed the disclaimer that we hang up in all of our um, facilities. And once you walk in, uh, particularly in our dining centers, you see this. And students who have special diets, if they've contacted me and I'm working with them, they know, they know that we have um, the disclaimer, uh, they know what the accommodations are, they know who to contact, they're given everybody's phone number, cell phone numbers, uh, you name it, they can contact us at any time. Uh, I talked a little bit about the QR codes and, you know, these QR codes are kind of passe, we hear that all the time, but students love them. They absolutely love the QR codes and they love to be able to scan it and get the nutritional and to also get what um, allergens may appear um, in that food item. The dedicated space in all of we, – we have dedicated spaces in all of our facilities. Each facility is very different. And each time we've developed a dedicated space, it's um, dining center by dining center, cafe by cafe, because every um, single one is going to be um, very different. So – now, I want to talk about some of the challenges. 
and when we first decided to go with Kitchens with Confidence, we went through extensive research, and we wanted to find the um, uh, who was going to work best with Syracuse University, and it de- definitely ended up Kitchens with Confidence. And you know, we've never looked back. We are incredibly happy with what they provide for us. Um, Betsy and Allie are incredibly knowledgeable. So one of the biggest challenges was, number one, the commissary. And I kind of talked a little bit about the commissary. And is the food from the commissary um, coming, is it the, you know, gluten-free? No, it's not. Uh, we have a very large pizza um, concept, and the commissary makes the shelves. So it won't be – I don't think it will ever be gluten-free, at least not in my lifetime. So the commissary is always, always a challenge. The one thing that we have, we have some great chefs now. We have a food pro coordinator, and she does a great job of working with me to make sure we get the best we can. Consistency was a challenge initially. Since we are working with Kitchens with Confidence, uh, the consistency – they just pointed us in the right direction for so many things. And, you know, we looked at peanuts and tree nuts. There was no way we ever thought we would ever be able to be peanut and tree nut free. But working with Betsy and Allie has really changed our minds and really said, you know what, we think we can do this. So that's kind of where we're working now. Um, Training has always been tough. And the training policy that we've put in place, we've tried to plug every hole possible. One of the biggest things is training on demand. If somebody needs training um, because something – um, may have happened, then we definitely will um, go in and train them. And then the setup, the kitchen setups are always um, difficult. And it's definitely one on one on one. It's always going to be um, each facility, uh, depending on uh, not only the size, but each dining center has its own personality, and each dining center serves different students. Uh, so, you know, the challenges were there. We were able to overcome them. When we first wanted to do this, and I was looking at um, what Kitchens for Confidence needed from us, I, I was initially really overwhelmed. However, they were so good about a conference call, an email, telling us exactly what we needed to do. And uh, so the supporting documentation, when we looked at it, we were, we were overwhelmed, but they really helped us with regards to getting all the stuff that they needed ahead of time. And um, it made it so much – it was stress-free. Um, it was enjoyable. It was really nice to be able to look at our program. So the benefits, it's funny that a a challenge always turns into a benefit. Um, 18% of our students um, have some type of special diet, and that's based on last year's numbers, and it just goes up. I'm getting three and four a day, so it's definitely um, going up. Our gluten-free menu, uh, it's about 30%. And initially, one of the challenges was cost, but it's become part of our menu planning. It's really no longer um, an issue. Cost doesn't seem to be an issue. Our students, when they find out that we have a uh, third-party certificate from Kitchens of the Confidence and the parents, they're incredibly happy. And I use um, the Gluten Tox, and I also use NEMA. And the Gluten Tox, we use Gluten Tox Pro for food and surface. We use it for surface because one of our dining centers doesn't have such a separate kitchen like some of them do. So by using these testing procedures, it gives us, it makes us think, okay, we're doing the right thing. Um, and we're constantly working on the front of the house and the back of the house with regards to um, our menu. And um, training is always, you know, a huge piece of, of what we do. Um, and vendors, we have the great bid language, but it's working with these vendors to say, you know, this is the information we need. We will not accept substitutes. We need the mo- most updated information that um, we could possibly possibly get from you. So one of the things that we did is we have um, our director of auxiliary services, Jamie Sear, when we went, Jamie's actually the one that said, you know, do some research. You, you tell me what's going to work for you guys. And it was definitely Kitchens with Confidence. And um, Jamie said the number of students entering college with food allergies has grown significantly. And parents are nervous about that when they send their child to school, we believe that this gluten-free certification will help ease the anxiety for parents and students. We're doing more than saying we're gluten-free. 
we're verifying with an independent third party. And it's just been um, it's been a pleasure working with um, Betsy and Allie. We look forward to uh, doing a lot more with them in the future. All right. Thank you so much, Ruth, for um, talking about what Syracuse is doing. We are um, kind of cutting into our Q&A um, section of the webinar, so I'm just going to um, quickly run through this. So food allergy and gluten-free audits, um, what Ruth has already said, you know, all food service establishments can look into getting audits, um, getting that third party validation. You can do it right now. Um, and why is there's just a lack of allergy awareness and it's a major concern and challenge for not only students, but if you're in a restaurant, um, those guests and it will increase your profit having, um, having people feel comfortable eating in your establishment. So um, there are a couple different places you could get certifications. Yes, Kitchens with Confidence is one, um, and we love all the wonderful things Ruth has said about us, but there are others. Um, here are just a couple um, different groups that do audits. So there's FAIR, um, the Gluten Intolerance Group, and Great Kitchens. Um, as far as we know right now, Kitchens with Confidence is the only one who certifies for both allergens and gluten-free. Um, and I'm just going to keep on going because we'd like to get into our Q&As. But um, here is another quote from Chef Kevin Grant from Cornell University um, speaking on his experience with an audit. So they, um, we've had great allergy training, but to take it to the, that next step and make it an all-you-care-to-eat, gluten-free, tree nut-free, and peanut-free dining hall, I think that's pretty special. So um, just a quick summary here. Assess what works for your operations. Review your allergy plan. Is it all encompassing? And finally, get that third-party validation. Um, have an expert come in, verify and validate your efforts, and then hopefully get a certificate so you can sign that or put that on your wall and have um, be able to share it with your guests or students um, and their families. Um, so now we'll open it up to the questions. Um, I do have a question here from Dave. Um, his question is, our resident dining program is strong. How do you label for individual catering items on a catering buffet? Um, so if I'm understanding your question correctly, Dave, um, you're asking about on catering buffets, how would you label? Um, depending on how the buffet is set up, you could label, um, you know, with a little table tent or some kind of card on the serving bowl, um, as well as having tongs that have labels on them. Um, you know, you could have the items name, so, you know, chicken marsala, and then um, if you have any allergens, I would list in a parenthesis right after that, um, you know, if there's dairy or soy um, in that item. Um, and here's another question for you, Ruth. I believe it's for you. Um, how has your staff reacted to the audit? Well, we had a team that we put together initially, and uh, it was the, um, our directors, our managers, our associate directors, uh, they think it's great. It makes them so much more comfortable knowing that they are doing the right thing. Uh, and and they, we have so many students with special diets. Celiac disease is huge on this campus. So believe it or not, our staff, they're so happy that they actually um, have this direction and feel comfortable with what they're making and serving. Great, thank you. Um, I have a question here from Joyce. Uh, do you consider coconut as a tree nut and label it as such? Um, from Kitchens with Confidence, our standpoint on um, labeling allergens, we do follow the FDA recommendations. So um, we understand that the FDA recognizes coconut as a tree nut. So if, um, uh, although you know most people with tree nut allergens are not um, allergic to coconut, 
what we would suggest is doing tree nut free except coconut um, is the way we would label uh, coconut separate from tree nuts. Um, Ruth, did you would you like to add anything with sure. tree nut yeah. and coconut? So what we do is on our menu, if it does contain coconut, we put that it does contain tree nuts. But when we meet with students who have tree nut allergies, we uh, let them know and we try to put coconut in the print as name. So it says um, chicken with coconut. We've never had a student on campus that has a tree nut allergy that's actually allergic to coconut. So we've, it, it's going to be labeled, but if a student has a question, they know if it's not in the print as name that they just uh, send me a text or uh, ask one of our dining center staff. So we do label it, but there are a lot of ways to um, get your questions answered. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and this next question is from Megan, and she said, can you briefly, briefly explain how Syracuse can say gluten-free when the commissary is not gluten-free? To my knowledge, saying a facility gluten-free requires extensive cleaning and verification. Um, I can uh, kind of... Or do you want to go ahead, Ruth? Yeah, so we, anything that comes from the commissary, we don't, we don't call that gluten-free. That's why every dining center has their own uh, gluten-free uh, prep area. So anything that comes from the commissary is not called gluten-free. Yeah, and, and just to also add in on there, um, the spaces that are called gluten-free um, within Syracuse's dining halls are um, separate areas and spaces that um, you know, serve gluten-free areas. So it's not the entire dining hall or the entire campus that is um, certified gluten-free, just to kind of clarify that point. Um, I think we have time for one more question um, before we end the webinar today. Um, what other resources did you use um, when deciding to get an audit? Um, and I believe that question is for, for you. Um, Ruth? Yeah, we, we actually used all the ones that were on the slide that Allie put up. We used FAIR, um, Great Kitchens, and there was another one. So we looked at those four. Those are the four that we actually looked at uh, when we did research. And we did pretty extensive research, and we did the pros, the cons, what are we looking for, what can they give us type thing. And um, that's when it came out for Syracuse University, uh, Kitchens with Confidence was our best choice. Awesome. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through, but um, I just want to say thank you all so much for attending and participating in um, our first Auditing 101 webinar, What You Need to Know to Be Allergen and Gluten-Free Successful. Um, there will be an e a follow-up email sent with a summary and post-meeting survey, so be on the lookout for that. If you have a couple minutes um, after this, there's also a survey um, attached to that email, and we would love to hear your feedback. If you're still hungry for more and interested in learning more about auditing or specifics that we didn't cover, um, also in that email you will find links to our next two webinars, um, Auditing 101, A Chef's Perspective, and Auditing 101, Best Practices. Um, once again, these webinars will be available for the special price of free. and um, for more information and to stay up to date with all food allergy news, legislation, and training and tips and tricks, um, you can sign up for our free newsletter at menutrinfo.com. And if you have any other um, questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My email is ali at menutrinfo.com. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been a lot of fun putting this material together, and I'm so thankful for Ruth. Thank you so much for joining us and speaking on behalf of Syracuse University's Dining Services. You're well, you are welcome. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you all, um, and we will end this webinar.